What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Extra Dough. It's JD here. Episode 10. We're going to continue our conference preview series right where we left off. We hit the Big Ten West last week. Go ahead and check it out if you have not. Today, we're going to hit the Big Ten East. Uh, this is the stronger half of the conference for sure. Um, so we're going to hit every single team. We're going to hit what we're looking for this year. We're going to hit their win totals, conference championship odds, some strengths, some weaknesses, things to look forward to this season. It's basically a primer for the season uh, and what to look for if you're college football betting or you're just a fan of the sport, what to look for to preview the conference. So trying to give you some good nuggets, some good information. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you know, college football's a month away. So we're going to finish this up. We uh, we already hit Pac-12 and uh, AC, or sorry, we already hit, yeah, Pac-12 and ACC uh, future odds. So check that out. Uh, earlier earlier this summer we hit them about you know a couple months ago so we already covered those conferences uh so we just have sec and acc left and then we're prepared for power five so without any further ado the michigan wolverines uh and by the way i'm going in order of um finish last year so if you're yelling at me what order i'm going in it's the order of finish in conference play so uh michigan they were 12-2 and two a year ago. Magical year. Obviously, they made the college football playoffs. Lost to Georgia handily, but I, I wouldn't hold that against them whatsoever. Pretty much anyone who's going to play Georgia is going to get pretty much destroyed. It seems to happen every year, right? Whoever plays the one seed, it's not going to go well, right? You remember Oklahoma playing uh, LSU and Joe Burrow. Oh, Oklahoma must suck. Notre Dame's done it a couple times. They must suck. Michigan State, Washington, uh, Cincinnati, uh, whoever's up there playing those top teams. It's gonna, it's gonna get gonna get wrecked. Um, so I don't hold that past them whatsoever. I think it was a great year. Um, I'm kicking myself a little bit because I've always been a Harbaugh backer, not necessarily a fan, but I feel like I've defended him because the fan base is trying to fire him, and all he's doing is turning out winning seasons. And oh, but he can't beat Ohio State. Whatever. So we all recognize how dumb that is last year because they beat Ohio State. So he's in the clear for now. So how is he going to back up last year's massively successful season? Um, well, their, their win total set at nine and a half. So another positive year is expected. Conference championship odds at uh, right plus ten hundred. It looks it looks a little short to be honest with you. Or sorry, it looks a little looks like it could be shorter to me. Um, you do return thirteen starters and you rank sixty seventh in returning production. So you return nine starters offensively and four uh, defensively. So I think that's the main question I have with this team: is are you going to keep competing at that elite level that you've been competing at defensively when you lose those three high NFL draft picks, right? Are, are, are you, I'm not saying they're going to be bad up front, but they're not necessarily guaranteed to be elite like they were a year ago where they absolutely controlled both lines of scrimmage. It's a question mark. They'll be good there. We know they'll be good there, but are they going to be elite is the question. Um, as far as strengths, I mean, offensively, you return nine starters, um, you probably have the best O-line in the country. It's probably between them and Notre Dame, if you ask most people. I'd, I'd probably go Michigan, uh, or you get another transfer to bolster that. So I think they're going to be just as strong as last year. They're going to run the heck out of the ball. You lose Hassan Haskins at running back, and not to be disrespectful to him, but I don't even really think that matters because you have Blake Corum, who was extremely effective when given a chance last year. And then you have Donovan Edwards. Both of these running backs are very well-rounded. They can both pass, you know, catch passes so it's not like you're going to spell one with a third down back they're both dangerous the defense isn't going to know what's going to hit them uh and, and your wide receiver core you had ronnie bell i thought was their best wide receiver uh, he got injured last year now he's back so hopefully he's back healthy you got a lot of weapons so whoever your quarterback is it's a battle between Cade mcnamara who played most of last season and then jj mccarthy right he's a little more mobile supposed to have a little bit more of a stronger arm it's going to be a battle you'll see both on the field just like you did last year there's a chance mccarthy takes over that job and gives them you know more dynamism that they're lacking with mcnamara and that would make them even more dangerous this year because they weren't necessarily very dynamic last year and like i said with those two and i know that both these backs were on the team last year but you expect them to take a step forward right with increased production increased usage this year um they could technically be more dynamic and technically could be even better offensively. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I would have more, again, I don't have a strong read in the quarterback room. He's probably going to play in both start to the year. We'll see. I know McCarthy was dealing with an injury that kept him out for a lot of the spring and that probably hampered his development. He probably won't start week one, but, but we'll see. Um, McNamara is a great option as well. If you're having a quarterback who led you to the playoffs and he's back, that that's, a, that's a good quote unquote fallback option as some people view it. 
Um, so when I'm looking at the schedule, I would have to go over nine and a half for the win total. Um, that's the only way I could play this. You have a cupcake non-conference schedule. You play Colorado State and Hawaii, um, two Mountain West teams you should nominate. You play UConn, easy win. Um, as far as your home games, you get Penn State, Maryland, and Michigan State all at home. So your tougher games in conference come at home. You're going to be favored in all of those. Um, your away games this season, you have at Iowa, at Indiana, at Rutgers. Indiana and Rutgers should be pretty easy victories, fingers crossed. And then at Iowa is really the one the one challenge on the schedule, the one challenging away game. There's only one. Um, so I think it's a very... Very, very, very man manageable schedule for Michigan. I think there's a chance they could open the season 11 and 0, probably maybe 10 and 1 at worst, uh, 9 and 2, right? Uh, and of course, I'm leaving out. You end the year at Ohio State is what I'm leaving out. So that's obviously a tough game. You beat them a year ago, but they're going to be crazy. We're going to talk about them next. So um, only way I could play that would be over. All right, Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, you know what it is with Ohio State by now. Um, they had their first two loss season last year since 2017, but they're not going to take a step back. You can tell right there, their win totals at 10 and a half conference championship odds. They're the, they're the favorite minus 230, probably only moving in one direction there, right? Uh, and you return 14 starters and rank number 23rd in returning production. So that's huge for them. They were near the very bottom of the country last year, depending whose metrics you're looking at. Um, they were like very close to the bottom. I know some of them had them 129th. Uh, in that range, they they didn't return anything last year. And at a school like Ohio State, you do rebuild and reload. But it's worth mentioning that you won 11 games and you rank 23rd in returning production. And that's really, really, really solid returning production. Uh, it's not like it's you're returning bad players. They're returning elite talent uh, that should get better the longer they have it with starting experience, right? So uh, when I'm looking at this team, there's only one way you can look at it. They're right up there with Alabama as a top two team in the country. That's where they are. Um, I've had my doubts in the past, and last year I, I, I said some pretty negative things, and that's because their defense was a joke. It was. For relative to the talent they had on the roster, the defense was a joke. Um, I think that's, I don't know if I want to say fixed right away, but uh, I think it will get fixed, and I think it's, they made the correct move. They, they you know, they, they had the right remedy for the situation because um, they hired Jim Knowles as their new defensive coordinator. So if you don't know who Jim Knowles is, Oklahoma State, you know, they used to be a, this offensive juggernaut, all of a sudden they turned into a, a team that made the Big 12 championship, right? Beat Baylor once, then lost to Baylor in a close um, conference championship game. Um, I mean, Jim Knowles was leading that defense. So all of a sudden they became a defensive juggernaut. If it seemed like it came out of nowhere, it didn't. It was Jim Knowles. Uh, you know, he gets a few transfers in there with him. I believe he brings his safety. I think his name is McAllister over. Uh, it's a high-level transfers. And, of course, they already have the talent. So now they're going to be better coached. I think the defense is going to take a huge step forward. So that's scary when you consider. And that's the one question mark with this team, right? Because offensively, there's no question mark. There's nothing you have to worry about. If you're pairing a better defense with an offense that averaged 45.7 points per game last year, that's scary. I think that offense could be even better. I think the numbers could even go up because I don't see how they're going to go much down. I just don't. CJ Stroud talked about him on my quarterback ranking show. I gave him the number two ranking. Don't yell at me. Bryce Young, he won the Heisman. Relax. Uh, but he's only going to get better. He improved as the year went on last year. That's going to continue, I think. Um, tr Travion Henderson, like he, you started a true freshman at running back last year. He's going to get better. Uh, I think the offensive line is going to continue to be a beast. Uh, your wide receivers, you lose two first rounders, but I don't even think you take a step back, which would sound crazy to most schools. Um, but you don't. Jackson Smith and Jigba's back, and I think he was the best of all three. He was the most productive of all three a year ago. You have Marvin Harrison Jr. You have Emeka Gabuka, Julian Fleming, yada, yada. You get it. They're set. I think this offense is going to be even better than last year, and I think the defense is going to be a lot better. Um, schedule. You open with Notre Dame, and that's a tough opener, obviously, especially when you're looking at, like, Michigan opens Colorado State at home. So, I mean, come on. And that, so that's a tough opener. I think that's the time you want to get Notre Dame. Um, full disclosure, I'm a Notre Dame fan. I think that's the time you want to get them. That'll be Marcus Freeman. He coached in the bowl game last year, lost. So Marcus Freeman's never won a game with Notre Dame. I know there's a lot of positive momentum around Marcus Freeman, but he's a first-time head coach that usually has not gone well. At Notre Dame, I think the last one we saw was what Charlie Weiss. Yikes! Um, not saying he's Charlie Weiss. I, I think we've seen already he's going to be more successful. That does not mean he's going to be successful 
in South Bend, game one, traveling on the road at Ohio State. Tyler Buckner, he played a little bit last year, but he threw, what, like 60 passes last year? Um, so new quarterback, new coach. The wide receiving depth is a huge concern. You lose Kyron Williams at running back. The defense will still be solid, so I guess they could keep it a game, but I think that's a really tough spot for Notre Dame, that, that first game. Obviously, it's a tough spot, but I think that sets up well for them. And then the rest, I think they're going to win every game on their schedule. Uh, I'd favor them by a touchdown in every single one of them, a touchdown or more. Uh, obviously, the one potential banana peel and obviously i mean this team lost to purdue a few years ago there's always a banana peel somewhere but the only one that you can foresee or at least predict looking at the schedule it's obviously michigan at the end of the year because they lost to michigan last year uh and michigan's a darn good football team so um you know they get the home advantage in that one they're gonna have the revenge angle it's pretty good other than that you play wisconsin at game it's the fourth game of the year and you have toledo the week before and Rutgers the week after so i think you're going to be Circling that game on the calendar, I think that sets up well. I think that's going to be a great spot. It's actually a great spot for both teams because Wisconsin, the week before, they play New Mexico State. The week after, they play Illinois. So it sets up well. Both teams are going to give a great effort, but you have to obviously favor Ohio State pretty decently there. So how I'm approaching this team, uh, only way I could take the win total is over. Um, I mean, I think they probably run the table, and if not, there's only one slip up there. So I think you definitely have to go over. Uh, I, I feel fairly confident about that one. Uh, and then as far as betting wise, they're uh, 12 and seven ATS as a home favorite and eight, three and one ATS as an away favorite. Um, so basically play them as a favorite. And then they're 16, nine and one ATS in conference play. So a favorite in conference play, either home or away is mainly what I'm looking for. All right, Michigan State. So they obviously had a terrific season last year. They built a ton of positive momentum um, under Mel Tucker. And I'm sorry, but I'm not buying it. Um, so I got the positives out of the way first. I'm just not buying it. Um, I do think Mel Tucker's a good coach. I do think he's building something special. Okay, so I'm buying that. I'm buying the program in general. But as far as, you know, gambling, betting perspective, there's no way I would be buying last year's. 11 and two finish. I think that was totally absurd. Um, I think there's going to be some unrealistic expectations this year from some people. And I think they achieved more than they were supposed to last year. And they'll be somewhat falling back to earth. Um, the fact of the matter is they were negative 63 yards per game in big 10 play. Let me say that again. They were outgained by 63 yards per game in big 10 play. And they finished 11 and two. It's crazy. There's a reason that doesn't happen very often. There's a reason you would expect that to uh, normalize this season. I think they were very, very, very fortunate last year. And again, I don't want to say lucky. I like what this program's building. I don't like when the term luck is used, but you cannot deny they were, they were certainly fortunate last year. Uh, they just weren't very good on either side of the ball. Usually if you're not great on either side of the ball, I didn't say, didn't say they were bad on either side. Well, they were pretty bad on one side, but uh, usually you don't win 11 games. So, um, Offensively, you return five starters. You know, you have Peyton Thord, uh, Peyton Thorne, you have Jaden Reed, star wide receiver. Um, I think they're going to be solid. Um, but you do lose Kenneth Walker, the third Seattle Seahawks draft pick. And he was basically, I don't want to say he's your entire offense, but your entire offensive game plan was structured around him. You don't, if you recall that Michigan game last year, I mean, single handedly, not exaggerating. Um, Kenneth Walker stole you that game. You don't have that luxury this year. So they'll still be solid there. Defensively, you return nine starters, and I do think we'll see some improvement, which is why I'm like not totally selling this team. Again, I like this program. They're going to be solid on both sides of the ball. You can argue they're going to take a step forward on both. I would argue they probably take a slight step back offensively and a step forward defensively. But um, the reason I think they're going to be solid on defense, other than returning nine starters there, is... Um, they allowed 325 passing yards per game last year. That was the worst in the entire country. They couldn't stop the pass whatsoever. Um, they're going to get better there. Well, you can't get worse. They're going to get better. Why? Because they do have talent. Um, if you look back at their stretch of games they played, they played, I think it was five or six. Don't quote me on this. I didn't write it down in my notes. I think it was five or six um, of the top passing, top 10 passing teams in the country they played last year. So that hurt their numbers. Um, obviously they were playing from ahead a lot. They had an 11 2 record. So, uh, teams were in disadvantage, disadvantageous, um, passing game script. So they were throwing the ball more. Um, you return six guys in the secondary who, who started last year, and then you add a mere speed, a transfer from Georgia. So I think they're very clearly going to get a little bit better, uh, in the passing defense, which was their main weakness, uh, a year ago. So, um, 
plus 2700 conference championship odds that seem a little wide but i'll talk about that later i'm not going to recommend pretty much anyone other than michigan and ohio state i think it really should boil down to them too i'll talk about penn state later but um the seven and a half win total seems a little low like last year it was way too low this year even though i'm, I'm listing some negatives on this team or some reasons that you might want to be a little hesitant um let's walk through the schedule to see why i like it so i think you have five wins on the schedule you could obviously lose these games, but five that you're going to definitely hope to win. You play Western Michigan, Akron, two MAC schools, at Illinois, home against Rutgers, home against Indiana. You're going to hope for five wins there. You could blow one, our uh, worst four and one. Uh, so you're going to need three more. If we count those all as wins, you need three more. Um, the most likely spots at Washington. It's a tough place to play, but it's early on in the year. Washington really bottomed out a year ago. I think Michigan State wins, but it's close. At Maryland probably win that game you could be on upset alert they have a good defense you could view that more as a toss-up um but i don't know i think you get to seven uh, in order to get to eight wins you need to get one win against minnesota ohio state wisconsin at michigan at penn state i think it probably would happen so not super confident my money's not been placed there but i definitely would lean over if i'm taking a side it, ha it has to be the over all right penn state I do like Penn State this year. Let me say that. Um, it's weird for me to say that after last year because they weren't good in 2020. And a lot of people expected them to take a step forward, have a bounce back here last year. And I was very hesitant about them doing that because I did not like some of the things I was seeing. And I think it, I thought it was just false confidence. Oh, it's Penn State. Of course, they'll get back. Um, and that ended up being the case. They were not great last year. They finished with a 7-6 and six record. Um, but I am kind of buying a bounce back this year. So let me kind of go over why. Um, I did cover them in depth earlier this season. If you want to take a look at um, one of the previous extra, I forget which episode it was, but I, I went through my make or break years, teams that are in a make or break season. And Penn State was one of them. And the more I thought about them, the more I kind of thought, yeah, they're probably going to make it. Um, I, think I see enough positive signs with this team that I do think Penn State's going to be near the top of the division. So I'm not recommending you go out there and, let, and lay plus 1,200. But, I mean, this is a team that was right there with Michigan last year and lost the game. It wasn't that they were a bad 7-6 seven and six, seven and six teams. It's just they slipped a little bit. They really did slip. So why do I think they're not going to continue slipping? Well, I think they do have some positive momentum uh, on the recruiting trail. You signed Nick Singleton, who's a running back, who I think is going to I don't know if I want to say star, but he could be a star immediately. He's going to play. The running game's been abysmal lately, um, and that's a problem. It's It's been really bad for at least two straight years. He averaged only 3.2 yards per carry last season. So uh, the offensive line really needs to show me something, right? But um, it's hard for me to see them finishing any worse than 3.2 yards per carry, especially with Nick Singleton. I just don't really see how that's possible. So, um that, but it's make or break. If they suck at running the ball again, then they're not going to be much better. They're not going to hit that over eight and a half total. Um, okay, offensively, some things to like. Sean Clifford, you said things to like Sean Clifford. Um, he has a lot of haters, is what I'll say. He has his doubters, and I've been one of them. I mean, he needs to improve his accuracy. He just does. But this kid has been productive before. Um, running the ball, right? Using his legs is one of his most positive attributes. And he was really banged up last season, like banged up to the point he missed a few games, banged up to the point he was considered questionable. Like it seemed like every single week and we never knew if he's going to play or not until we see him warming up. And even then we didn't know because he's trying to fight through it. Game time decision. He was extremely banged up last year and they did not have the backups. Bring in, and, and again, it sounds like Drew, Drew Alar may not be quite ready this year, but bringing him in, I think you have more solid backup options. I think that's just going to elevate the room in general. I think you're going to see a good year out of Sean Clifford. I'm a believer. One of the reasons I am a believer, even though, again, he, he's not a perfect quarterback, but he's extremely experienced, and I think he's going to be able to use his legs a lot more, which is his strongest attribute. And he has some really good wide receivers at his disposal. You lose Jahan Dotson, but you return uh, Parker Washington, who was a very productive number two last year. You add Mitchell Tinsley from Western Kentucky, and all he did was have 1,400 yards last season. Uh, and then Keandre Lambert-Smith is a very good and experienced uh, wide receiver three. So, uh, yeah, I think they're going to be good offensively. Defensively, you're concerned. They return only four starters on the defensive side of the ball, but they were amazing there last season. Uh, they, they finished on a high note. They allowed only 17 points per game in their last four games of the season. 
So while you do lose some good players, um, I think they're solid on all three levels still. Um, their weakness defensively last year was the defensive front just kind of got soft in a lot of matchups and teams ran the ball over there. I don't think that's the case this year. I think they have a pretty solid defensive line, especially with P.J. Mustafer returning uh, in between the tackles. I just um, I think they're going to be solid there. So I, I just don't really see a huge weakness for this team, to be perfectly honest with you. So looking at the schedule, you begin at Purdue, then against Ohio at home, then at Auburn, then Central Michigan, Northwestern. You're hoping to go four and four and one there. I think there's a chance you could go five and zero. Oh. You know, at Purdue's a little tricky to start the year. At Auburn's obviously tricky. Um, I'm not a big Auburn fan. I'll say that this year. I, I don't know what's going on there. They had a scandalous offseason. I don't think the skill talent's up to par in the SEC. It still should be a close game. Last year was one of the games of the season, so I'm not poo-pooing that. Going at Jordan Hare, we, weird stuff happens there. Everyone knows it. Um, but I think you're hoping for four and one there, right? Like Central Michigan, Northwestern, Ohio should be easy wins. Purdue, you're going to be favored there at Auburn. I mean, I think I think Penn State. I have to check, but I I, I make him a favorite personally. So um, you could go five and zero start the year. Um, then you have a bye week. When you come back, some of your more winnable games at Indiana and at Rutgers. Again, I like when your easy games are on the road easier because that could be a trap spot. But as long as it's not, as long as you handle business like you're supposed to as the favored team, I think you're going to get two road wins there. So that gives you what? Um, six and one, uh, maybe seven and oh in those games if we think they, they go five and oh to start, which again is a little, a little hopeful. Um, then you have a home game against Maryland. I think you win. That, that will give you seven or eight, depending on how you're scoring it. Um, and you would need two more wins from Minnesota, Ohio State at home, then at Michigan and Michigan State. Um, so I could only play the over. The schedule, I don't want, I don't know if I want to say it's easy because you begin at Purdue. You have Auburn in the non-con. Um, but you do get Michigan State at home. You do get Minnesota at home. I think you're hoping to win at least one of those. So I think they, I think they hit the over. Um, I don't know if I'm super confident in that, but this is a team I'm looking to back this year. Um, Penn State is 18 and 12 against the spread in the non-conference under James Franklin. So I'm looking to play them in the non-con is, uh, is how I have this team circled. And I, I like this team this year. All right, the Maryland Terrapins. All right, you return 16 starters this year, nine offensively and seven defensively. Uh, you finished seven and six a year ago, and your win total this year is only at five and a half. So initially seems a little low. Um, your conference championship odds are so wide that it sounds like pretty much no one has faith in you to pull off something big this year. Um, and you rank number 43rd in returning production. By the way, those returning production numbers, if, if you're wondering why they're different than yours, if you if you keep your tallies, um, I updated them with the most recent Bill Connolly numbers. I know they're not on the ESPN website. If you go check there, they're not there, but I up, did update. He tweeted them out. Um, so if they're slightly different than yours, then that would be why they I used the most accurate updated ones. So... Um, the strength of this team is the offense. I think they're going to be dangerous offensively. I don't know if I want to say they're going to be really dangerous offensively because um, I do. Here's how I view Maryland. They beat up on bad teams. And then when they play stiff competition, they just can't hang. And I don't necessarily know if that's going to change this year. So here's why it could. It's a very talented offense. You have Talia tonga -Vailo. You have an experienced quarterback. So while he has really fallen short, I mean really, really, really fallen short when he plays stiff competition, what do you have, five interceptions against Iowa? And, and it happens every year. He's, he's catching hype this offseason. He was catching hype last offseason. Then he was catching hype after he had, you know, he beat up on bad competition, and he's going to beat up on bad competition again this year. Um, he's just fallen short. Like when they play good defenses, they can't operate. They, they exist by running up the score on bad teams. It, again, it could change. Talia is more experienced this season. Um, the wide receiving room is extremely good. Uh, Demon, uh, I do, I did, I did the wrong. Demas, Dante Demas, uh, one of the he was the leading receiver last year before he got injured. Um, they said in the Big Ten media days yesterday that he should be ready to go. Um, well, they didn't say he should be ready to go. They said he might be ready to go week one, which is huge because we didn't know his timetable to return. Um, you have you have uh, 
you have Jarrett, the former five-star. You have Jacob Copeland, transfers in as Florida's former leading uh, wide receiver. Um, I like the talent. Uh, I like Corey Deitch's, um, their tight end. Um, I think they're very talented. Now, they haven't really been able to run the ball successively, you know, successfully. So that's something Loxley will have to prove he's capable of doing. But they do have talent back there. Um, defensively, they're still not great. That's that's probably my one of the weaknesses. But they've been improving the last two seasons. They allowed 30 points per game last year and returned seven starters there this year. So you're gonna you're gonna hope to be at least solid defensively. Um, my big question with them is this: other than the one I noticed about uh, or I noted about them playing stiff competition, it's Mike Loxley as a coach. Uh, they're a volatile team. They should win some games they're not supposed to, but I don't. When when you have an offense that talented, but I don't necessarily know if I trust Loxley to do that because he hasn't shown he's really going to do that with any sort of frequency whatsoever. Um, and they're going to lose some games they're not supposed to, and I, I do trust Loxley to do that. So uh, I don't put much stock into their bowl win personally. They they beat up on Virginia Tech, but that was a program in disarray. You know, firing Fuente and you know that was just not a good Virginia Tech team. Let's be honest. So um, how I'm approaching this team. I'm not really a believer, but the offensive talent is enough that I'm just I'm just trying to stay neutral. Um, Loxley in his career at Maryland is only four and eight against the spread as an away dog. And he's only ten and nineteen in conference play, so I would have it circled when they are an away dog in conference play. Um, let's take a look at the schedule because you only need to get six wins to cash the over. Uh, you begin your season against Buffalo, then at Charlotte, then home versus SMU. You could win all three. SMU is not a not a cakewalk, but you you hope to go three and zero there. And then if you're looking to find three more wins, you play at Indiana, and you play Northwestern off a of bye. Um, and those are those are back to back weeks. You're playing those games, so you could pick up two more wins. That could get you to five, and you end end your year with Rutgers, which would get you to six. Um, I think that's I think that's definitely doable. Um, you have a brutal sketch uh, stretch in your schedule where you play at Wisconsin, at Penn State. Then home versus um, Ohio State. That's that's probably three straight losses. And you also play Michigan and Michigan State, which you think are losses, but I wouldn't be that shocked if they upset Michigan State. To be perfectly honest with you, um, and you may not even need to to get to six wins. So I really don't see how anyone's playing this under. I understand Mike Loxley's not a coach you trust, but it's a talented team, and there's six or seven wins on that schedule, I believe, unless you really um, get upset. So only way I could play that would be the over. All right, Rutgers, you've been saying this guy is just, are you ever going to say maybe an under? Uh, yeah, I would take the under four and a half here for Rutgers. He finished five and eight a year ago. They have some positive momentum. It's year three under Greg Schiano. He has a lot of fans, and I'm a fan of Schiano too. I think there was a good hire. Obviously, we've seen him have success there. Not an easy program to have success at. Shout out Goose, by the way. Uh, we'll be on Saturdays, paid for play in the morning. Big Rutgers fan. Um, the fact of the matter is this. Their best player is their punter. Um, you lose your offensive weapons, Bo Melton and Isaiah Pacheco, who were basically all you had going offensively last year. Now you lose both of them. Um, I think it's going to be a tough year. I really do. Um, you probably turn to Gavin Wimsat at quarterback, the young kid. He was a huge recruiting win, uh, enrolled early, and now he, you know, he was there last season. I believe he skipped his senior year of high school. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong about that, but... Um, I think you're going to have him take over. If not, you have Noah Vidro, who has not been a good quarterback, but at least he's extremely experienced. Um, Sean Gleason, your offensive coordinator, formerly was at Princeton. It seems like a lot of people are kind of down on him. I don't know. He's been playing. He's been, you know, coordinating at Rutgers. I think he does a lot of creative stuff, and I don't think you can win conventionally at Rutgers offensively. Um, and he's not a conventional coach. He'll do some weird things. He'll line some guys up at different positions. Uh, you, you'll notice if you watch Rutgers. So I actually think it's a good fit. And I think with Wimsat, he can run around a little bit, and he should be, if he's ready to play this year, he should be the most talented quarterback we've seen at Rutgers in a while. You know, again, we haven't seen him on the field much, but we're projecting him to be with his recruiting pre pedigree. Um, so that's positive. But when you look at the schedule, I don't know, man. They're going to be okay defensively, right? You're turning 12 starters overall. But um, when I look at the schedule, I just I just don't see it. So um, you begin your year at Boston College. That's a tough opener on the road. I think Boston College wins that. Uh, and then you come back, you play Wagner, and you play at Temple. So you, that, that should be two wins there. Not, not you know It's not a given, but it should be two wins. Um, after that, it gets tough. You play Iowa at Ohio State, 
Nebraska on a short rest on a Friday game right after playing Ohio State. That's brutal scheduling spots. I don't think they're winning any of those three games. Uh, I don't know where the rest of the wins are supposed to come from. I guess you're home versus Indiana, and you would think that gets you to three wins, um, but I wouldn't expect anything to be a shoe-in win for them because they haven't won a Big Ten home game in four years. So even counting that one against Indiana feels a little weird. To me, you finish at Minnesota, home versus Michigan, home versus uh, Michigan State, Penn State, and at Maryland. Uh, I don't I don't see it. You're going to have to pull off some pretty serious upsets. So I feel fairly confident about the under four and a half for that one person. All right, guys, last one. Indiana Hoosiers. Uh, they bottomed out last year, guys. They finished at 2-10. and 10. Um, It was not pretty. You have this year, you have a, a, a win total of 4.5. You turned 12 starters, 5 offensively, 7 defensively. Uh, in returning production, you ranked 98th. Um, as far as changes this year, you have Walt Bell as your offensive coordinator. Uh, I'm not sure I have much positive things to say about Walt Bell. He was most recently the head coach at UMass, so I give him a pass. That's an extremely difficult place to coach, but uh, I'm just not sure what's going on. Offensively, um, you lose Michael Penix at quarterback, but he wasn't great. You bring in Connor Basilak as your quarterback um, from Mizzou, and he's he's okay. He should be serviceable, but he's not, you know, nothing special, I would say. And then Sean Shivers transfers in from Auburn and should be your lead running back. And again, he's okay. He's a good receiving back, but it not, I don't know if I call that like a strength. He, um, your wide receivers, you lose most of your productive guys from a year ago. So I'm not really sure what's going on offensively. I think they're going to be pretty dang brutal there again this year. And then defensively, Tom Allen, their head coach, who I thought pretty highly of going into last season. I'm not sure about last year because didn't go well, so I'm not sure anymore, but um, he's supposed to be a defensive guy, but allegedly he's relinquishing some of those uh, responsibilities to Adam Henry, their new defensive coordinator, um, so we will see, or sorry, not Adam Henry, Adam Henry, I believe that's their new uh, co-offensive coordinator, uh, their new defensive coordinator is Chad Wilt, um, so anyway, I'm not, I'm just not sure, I, I don't really have anything positive to say here, the one strength you can say is maybe it's Tom Allen's coaching, but again, that's kind of in question after last year, so we'll see, um, your weaknesses are pretty much everything, I don't know how the offense is going to operate, and defensively, you're, you know, you lose McFadden, your star, um, it's just, there's not a lot to point to, really, to be honest with you, so I think you're just hoping not to be terrible this season, uh, and, and you can argue they won't be terrible, I, I could make an argument there, but arguing they're going to be good is just like, hell no, I no. Uh, potential wins. You play Illinois to start the year, then you play Idaho, then you play Western Kentucky. So you can actually start the year 3-0 conceivably. Uh, but you would have to find two more wins, and that's difficult. You play Cincy in the non-conference, which is very, very tough. Obviously, I remember that was one of the, a big matchup early on last year. Um, and Cincinnati's going to take a step back. So I guess it's possible you snag that one, but they're not going to be favored. Um, can you get two wins in conference to get there? At Rutgers is your best shot for sure, um, but you're going to need an upset outside of that. And you have a brutal stretch, scheduling stretch, um, starting week three. So you play Western Kentucky week three, which could be winnable. They broke a lot of records last year, but they lose Zach Kitley, their offensive coordinator. They lose Jarrett Stearns. They lose Mitchell Tinsley, who we mentioned earlier to Penn State. Um, you lose everything um, offensively, but they sh could still be okay. And Western Kentucky is coming off a bye. So that's a, that's a little tough because you would hope that would be a shoe and win, and I'm not necessarily sure it is at all. And then you play at Cincinnati, at Nebraska. Then you play home Michigan, home Maryland, at Rutgers, who is coming off a of bye week. So even that Rutgers game where you're hoping to get a bye, they're hoping to get a win. It's a little tough, so I'd have to go under, but I don't, I don't feel confidently enough to bet that because they could walk in a few, but that, for sure the only way I could lean, lean right there would be the under all right, guys, that wraps up this one. We hit all the Big Ten teams. If you're looking at um, conference title odds, again, like I said, Ohio State is the only way it could go. I think they're the rightful favorite for sure. Uh, I think they're going to be kind of a death star this season. But, of course, Michigan does have a chance, and I think their odds are a little wide on Michigan. So, if anything, I would I would take a take a shot there. But I, I just think it's Ohio State's year. Too good, on, too good offensively. Defense should take a step forward with Jim Knowles. And uh, they're going to be hungry after last year. I know I hate when people say that they're going to be hang, hungry, but they are for revenge, and they get Michigan at home. So, I, I just think they find a way to take care of business. So other than that, signing off, uh, we'll be back next week with more uh, conference future odds. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out on social. Where is it? At Yonker CFB. Uh, any questions, anything like that? Uh, we're going to be coming at you, like I said, every Saturday morning with extra dough. 
I have a lot planned personally for this college football season, but you will see me with the good folks at Daily Bread Media, paid for play. We're going to be here every Saturday morning. Trying to break down some winners for you. Um, Other than that, thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your day.